Kristen Davis is best known for playing Charlotte in Sex and the City. What you may not know is that she's also a passionate social justice and humanitarian work campaigner. Well, Kristen's just got back from the Dadaab refugee camp in Kenya, where thousands of families, as we know, tens of thousands even, are in desperate need of food and water. And she's with us now. Good Hundreds morning. of thousands of people, well, unfortunately. Indeed, and the numbers really, sort of climbing yeah, all the time. It's really extreme. And yeah, uh, you're you, you, oh, you sort of if you're in one of these situations. If it's Monday, I must be in London. But you you were there what over the weekend? I was much? in Dadaab on Friday. Mm. Got back from Kenya to London on Saturday. Um, we had been in Tanzania. I was with Oxfam on a planned trip to Tanzania. Um, actually, talking to women farmers there about um, kind of long-term plans to avert food crisis because food crisis does seem to be the pressing issue for, for the future. And while we were down in Tanzania, we were hearing the numbers of the, the people and how it was escalating of the people flooding into the Dadaab camp. And we were so close that we felt, well, we, you know, we need to get up there. And we just really um, were unprepared for how, how really shocking, mm -hmm. shocking it is. Mm -hmm. What were people telling you about the circumstances there? Well, I think the main thing that struck me was how desperate their situation was that they left. You would never come to this place if you weren't in absolute desperate need because it is in the middle of nowhere. It's extremely windy, hot. There's nothing there but the camp. And the camp is so overfilled that a lot of these people who are mostly women and children mm -hmm. have walked sometimes 20 days. They've lost family members along the way. I might cry. Yeah. I well, that's okay. So the camp is full. You know, the main camp. So what we saw were what they call the newcomers. And they've just collected outside the camp. And they haven't even been officially um, registered or given their, their rations mm. yet. So there's no water. There's no food. There's no shelter. Mm. So a lot of these women have taken along um, unaccompanied minors, mm. which are probably orphans. What is this woman saying to you now? Um, this woman has poly... So she can't walk. I'm sorry. This story is a very hard story. But this, this woman can't walk, so she came from Somalia on a cart with a donkey with her. She started with five children, and now she just has three who are there. And her husband was killed along the way, and they took everything she owned. So the people that you see around us are her neighbors in the camp who are trying to help her and bring her water. Yeah bring her food because she can't walk to get it. So the people who are next to me um, talking to her there are Oxfam workers. And mm. so even though they're not officially in the camp, what we're trying to do is alert the people. There is um, Handicap International is there present in Dadaab. They just haven't been able to identify everyone because it's 9,000 people a week new coming mm. to the camp. So. Um, we had people there helping us to say, you know, here's a woman, um, one of the absolute most vulnerable in the camp who needs a wheelchair. She needs help for her children. Her children look malnourished. Um, you know, she basically needs everything. So Do you get the sense that, that um, I mean, because there's an, a DC appeal has been launched here and people have been yes. very generous. Yes, amazingly you, generous, wonderful. Do you get the sense, though, that that, that, that camp is really able to Cope. It will be able to cope with the funds. I saw um, the list of charities that have banded together who are there ready to help is so impressive. I, I was so heartened by the fact that they're there, they're ready. The UN is working very, very hard to accompany mm. all these people and, and accommodate all their needs. But it was just unprepared for this influx. And that's why this DEC campaign, the committee, is so amazing. And the, the, the response in these tough times just yes. really gives or you hope. Yeah, just they're ready. Seven to they're eight million pounds. They're, yeah. They can help, absolutely. I mean, literally anything can help these people they yeah. have nothing so even a pound if someone could send a pound will help and the committees all the charities involved in the committee are there already mm. it must seem so incongruous to you that you come from a land of plenty you know and, and live an extraordinary life and most of your life is all Hollywood based and celebrities and wealth and then you're plunged into this environment where people have literally nothing it is shocking it is shocking it's shocking just to think for all of us I am exceptionally lucky obviously and I live just a blessed life in, in, in many ways and you know just from sheer luck in, in many ways and when you do go it's it's just really hard to believe that it is 2011 and that mm. these people are living like this yeah. and then it's it is and then little, you have this whole other life really right, yeah. which, you, true. which you you know Enjoy, have to go and, back yeah. to it's true and and I'm lucky I, I I feel like part of what you learn there is is really to enjoy your life you know we are lucky and 
I think two things. We have a responsibility to the other humans on the planet. We have a responsibility in how we live. It's up to everyone how you choose to do. I, I, I feel like we all make our own choices mm -hmm. in how we help people. Um, but I also feel like, you know, the fact that these people have so much joy and, and they're helping their neighbors, you know, people with nothing are mm -hmm. able to help each other and, and, and they're existing. I mean, that means, you know, it's my responsibility to, to live my life and not worry about the, the small things and it's the stresses. It's a Spanish lesson to all of us, really, isn't totally. it? When you go there and yes. there's so much hope and optimism in the country where there is absolutely nothing, nothing. at all. Absolutely. Do you think, I, I mean, this is, this is a role you've been doing for many years, but mm -hmm. do you think that you will go back more frequently now, now that you've, you know, these people are, are people that have told you about their lives absolutely. and you've engaged with them, as we can see, very emotionally? Absolutely, yeah. You do, I feel very worried, I feel very worried, you know, about these people. I feel um, heartened by the Oxfam workers who are there already. Um, I'm in touch with them. Um, they're probably really sick of me <laughs> now. Um, but I would love to go back. I, I feel like there will be progress soon, and I would love to be able to report back to everyone mm -hmm. who's donated that, you know, there has been progress and we have been able to help because that's what we want to do, and that helps everyone feel better about being a human being. Well, thank you very much for coming thank to you. us this thank morning, you. being so honest, and we wish you a safe journey. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for helping me. That's <laughs> and if you'd like to contribute to the Disasters Emergency Committee appeal, there are details of how to donate on the Breakfast website. You can call the DEC directly. The number at the bottom of your screen, 0370 60 60 900. 0370-60-60-900. That's it from us for today. Tomorrow we are speaking to the internationally acclaimed dancer Carlos Acosta and the actress Gemma Jones. Yes, we'll bring you all the latest news as well on the phone hacking scandal. We'll see you tomorrow from 6 o'clock.